Lata Lee, and thank you for watching God's Encounter. Uh, this is part three, and this is called The Funeral. And all I'm trying to do is just show you my experience, my personal experience with God's, just having encounters from God, seeing God's hand just, just in, just in my life. And it's like a daily experience. Um, and it could have always been a daily experience. You know, I don't know because my mind wasn't like that and I wasn't, you know, you know, I think more of it that God was trying to get my attention, but you know, with life and, you know, you're trying to live and, you know, do all the stuff that you do. If it's pay, be at work, go to school, just, you know, just get the American dream, you know, accomplish that, um, you know, God could always be trying to get my attention using his Holy Spirit. But being like most people are in this world today, we don't notice. So the more I think about it, I think about things in my life that God was probably trying to get my attention and I just missed it. So um, with this, that's all I wanted to just share my experience um, that how my my encounters I've had with God, you know, if it been, you know, him sending an angel or a, a, a real angel or a, a person that's an angel or how he just intervened, you can just see his hand in it and it's like no way that person would have known or how, you know, things happen unexpectedly. So this is part three and this is called the funeral. And for the funeral, I am using... Let's see, I am going to use John 14 to 1. And this is part three called a funeral. And this scripture here is, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, but you also believe also in me. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Again, as I said in the other videos, you can say um, John 14 to 1, and this is from the NIV. Do not let my heart be troubled i believe in god believe also in me and so that's simply also in christ so just thinking about that scripture you can put yourself in and make it more personal then that way to have a little more that you know i guess ump to it or feeling to you because sometimes people can read and they're like okay i don't i'm not getting anything but don't stop just keep on keep on and i guarantee you it all will work out and comes to come together so um uh, this is about the, uh, a funeral. Uh, we had a church member to pass, and I mean, she was just a, uh, she was an angel, just a lovely woman. I was supported, kind, never had any issues, problems. Um, if you know anything about church or you deal with church, or any kind of leadership role, you know, all kind of things happen to come up. But this particular lady here, she just, just a sweet, you know, just, uh, just, I, I can't say it more, just a sweet individual and she uh, she passed and of course everybody was um, touched and hurt and her funeral uh, was going to be in New Jersey and we're like okay it's going to gonna be in New Jersey and here we um, go we always like somewhere either in Florida or Georgia you know there but the um, home church is um, in Georgia she lived in Georgia but she was from New Jersey so she wanted to be buried back with her, you know, where she's from, which, you know, that's what people do all the time. But, you know, with funerals, it's usually unexpected, and it usually, like, happen real fast within a week, you know. Now, some people do it in two weeks, but within a week. And let me tell you, when I say that, like, our money was, like, just funny, I'm like, okay, we, you know, to, to, to fly, to go to New Jersey at the last minute and then get a hotel, it was just going to be, just just like just so so much i mean just crazy and we didn't tell the family we wanted to come we was like we were we want to come and i was like that's the told my husband now that's one funeral i would love to you know if, if i had the money you know if i could go i would just do what i could to to get to that that funeral and i um so we got to um talk or whatever then one of the church members called and was like well i think y'all should go to the funeral i was like yeah i think we should too you know but you no know, we don't have a big church and church don't have you know you don't have you know, like a whole lot of money, you know, to be sending us to, um, you know, buying airplane tickets and hotels and stuff to New Jersey. And so I was like, okay, um, but if I could go, I would go. And so anyhow, the member got talking. It was like, you know what we could do? We can, um, how much you think you need? And I said, well, what we'll do, it'll be cheaper to drive. And we would, um, we would drive. I said, if we have to eat bologna the whole way, I'll buy some bologna and some of the ramen noodles and we'll, we'll roll with that. 
and we'll um, make access. So, but I would drive, even though got two little children, three and five, to um to to that, that got to go with us. I was like, all right, they may not been three and five, then they may be two and four. But anyhow, the point is, they were just. I'm like, okay, we just want to. We um, I want to get there, but I was sacrificed, and I tried to do most of the driving, and I was like, okay, this is gonna be a long drive. I can't remember if it was 15 hours, 16 hours with two little children. But I said, you know what, Lord? I said, you know, my faith said if I could go and go, and Lord, you're making the way, so I'm just going to drive it, you know? And you just can't think about everything being perfect or, you know, however. God um, said I want to go. My faith, they're working out. We can go, but now I'm going to have to drive, get, um, pack up everything in a day. I think it was a day or two, and get to driving with two little kids. So um, we get everything um, packed so we can leave out, the, um, like, the next day, I believe, in the morning. We pack and throw everything together. We got to sit by the um the door. And I was like, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to drive. I'm going to drive as far as I can. And if I could drive the whole way, I will. Not we'll drive as far as I can, take a nap, and get up so we can be there by the funeral. And so um, so we got everything packed, packed, and all the you know, stuff for my, my daughters and my husband. Because we're just getting everything all packed. And, there, and then when I got everything packed, I packed it at the door. So it was like, almost like a... You know, gotta gotta get it done because we got such a long drive and driving with children, it may take you a day or two to get there. So, with um that the stuff was at the door, I have to get a knock at the door because we we prepared and leaving. And now this person walk into the house and see our luggage and said, "Well, where are you all going?" I said, "Well, when our members dying and we about to head out and go." And then this person said to me, "You gonna drive?" I said, "Yeah." I said, "Because you know, that's what you know we got to, um to do. I'm having a problem with it." And so the person looked at me and said, um, okay. And then they like they went to thought mode. And so I didn't say anything. So the person came on in the house and then like five minutes later, said, let me talk to you. I said, okay. And said, uh, will you look up, um, look up airline tickets? I was like, oh, it's, go it's extremely high. I didn't check. It's like high. I mean, it's going to be it's like several thousand dollars to, to go in a lot. So when I said that, um, says it don't matter price, don't matter, just look it up. So I looked up, but when I, I found out I can book through like a speedy or somebody somewhere price line. And hotel airline tickets for four people, and the children had to pay because you know they were um under age, and um I was like uh four people that's gonna be really expensive. So that person like well I'm gonna leave I'll call you um back just call me when you find the price. So the person left the person um I find the the price of the I find the price of the the um, stuff and it was I mean it was a couple thousand dollars like this is just you know try so anyhow. I called, the person came back to the house, and I was like, this is just too much, I'll drive, you know, da, da. and the person said, listen, it don't matter the cost, if I could have the funeral here and bring the body here, I would pay for do that, and so it was just, you know, it was just such an act of love, and I'm like, okay, so the person gave me the credit card, told me to book, book the, um, the flights, I said, well, it's cheaper to get the flights in the room, and I said, but the rooms are running like $200 a night to fly to Philadelphia, I said, you know, and you know, when you're traveling, you don't want to stay anywhere because you may get caught up in the hood or somewhere. So I was like, well, this would be close to the airport. It's like, um, uh, it was, was it Hearthon? Um, it wasn't one of the hotels, but it was one of the um, nice hotels or whatever. But I was like, well, we'll, um, stay, um, we're on, that's where we'll pick the stay. And it was like, well, you need to get a rental car too. I was like, okay, um, no, it's the price already up there. So, anyhow, End up getting the fourth um, airline tickets last minute, so you can match how high it was. Um, the 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 all the nights paid for for us to stay in Philadelphia, so we can drive up to New Jersey and a rental car. And then the person told me you need to get a bigger rental car. Don't get the cheapest one because in case somebody there that's part of the family need to get in the car with you all and drive you around or show you out, y'all have enough room. So we got like an intermediate. You know, we didn't get like the cheapest car, or whatever. But you know. Somewhere a little more room, and we got all that. Had to repack. I just had to go. To, I mean, it was like time, and the flight was leaving out like the next um, next day. And so did all that. You know, got done. But we were blessed. You know, just having faith. I'm telling you, God can work in strange ways. The person that paid for, um, I you know, I'm not gonna mention that because a lot of people don't want to know what to let people know what they do. But the person that paid for, um, so they asked, do y'all need um, hegel? I think. Gave me like three hundred dollars to help with food or something. You know, it was just like bless after blessing. And then our church actually gave us. Some. I said, well, we, you know, getting the paper. Say, hey, well, you know, you never know when you're traveling. You just can't always find a McDonald's for a dollar burger. You may need to eat, so just go do. You know, do do what you do. Go surprise the family. Y'all show up and and it was just like when I say it was just uh, just just see the hand of God. 
when somebody don't even know the person, but God send them through your path and see your luggage, and they change it from like I was thankful for being able to drive, and I'm telling you, I was like I'm gonna eat bologna and we eat some noodles. I mean that's what kids like anyhow. But with all that, we was so like boom, we had to get there. When we got to the airport the next day, it was like like we was running late. I said we are gonna miss the flight. Oh my god, it was just it was just it was just a tear thing. It was like rush. You know, cause it was a funeral last minute. So we get there and I see the time. I said okay. It's no way in the world we're going to make this. We got to walk all the way in the Atlanta airport. If you know how big Atlanta airport is, we got to get in, get checked in. We got the kid. We got strollers. We got just, it's just so much. And we stand out there, security riding around. And he come around, he come around like 10 or 15 minutes later. And he looked, and he said, he said, you're still out here? And I was like, yeah. I said, I got two little kids and we're trying to get, um, get in. He said, oh, I didn't know you had any children with you. I was like, yeah. And my husband and the kids were walking on trying to get to the plate. And I'm driving. I said, okay. So my husband said, I said, um, I said, I think I said, check to see if you have any, like, the money, like, the $300, the money or whatever. Anyhow, it was so interesting um, that the money, I think the church had sent some money, too. And I was like, to, um, the, the money. But the money had fell out into the vehicle. So we were able to turn around, grab the, the money at the vehicle. So security watching all this. So he says to us, he said, you know what? I did not know y'all had little children. Y'all got all this stuff. He said, let me drive y'all to the door. We get into his car. He leaves out of the parking area. And he said, typically, you know, we don't do this here. But he said, but I'm going to do this for you all. And he took us and dropped us to the door to the gate where you had to check in with your luggage and everything. That saved us, I know, at Atlanta Airport, probably, what, 15, 20 minutes. It saved us. We got there. We got in. I was like, oh, thank you, you're an angel. He was like, oh, no problem. You have to look out for people, you know, that, that, that. So we got in, and whenever we got into the um, airport, the line, everything was just in that day. The slow was down to, you know, to just cause delay or whatever. I said, the plane is going to leave us. They sent us to, like, this long line that was not moving, and we got held up for everything. You know, but I was having strollers and bottles, and it just, it was just, just got held up for everything. And I said, we're going to miss this um, flight. Do you know, by the time we got to the terminal, I can hear a name. They calling our name. They calling our last name, and said they're looking for us. I, you know, and I was like, they're calling our name, and I just took off running. And I left my, my husband, and he pushing the kids, and um, he was pushing um, pushing them into our stroller. And I took off running. I'm like running, like running, walking fast, and got there. The lady looked at me. She said, "It said my last name." I was like, "Yeah." She said, "Come on." And so we went into the um, the, got into the plane. Everybody was seated. They told us to leave like the stroll and everything up front. We got on. It's like like I don't know, but I know we were late for that plane. But it's like for whatever reason, I mean, well, I know the reason. God just held that plane up for us. It was loaded. It was like they were waiting for us. And I haven't been late and missed the plane before. But I actually heard them call our name and um. And we were able to get um, on the plane. I, and as soon as we got on the plane, they, they shut that door. But why? I, tell, I told my husband, there's no way in the world we should have got on that plane. We should have missed that plane. But as God's in it, God made things happen. So have faith. Have faith. If you do not know the Lord, all you have to do is to start your relationship is say, Lord, forgive me my sin. I know I have sinned and fell short of the glory. I mean, you can say it however you want to jazz it up, but say something to that effect and say, Father, I know I believe in your son, Jesus Christ, you know that he died for my sins and he rose again in three days. And um, you, you just, you just, I mean, it's no formal way you have to do this. And you just say, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and you will get started. And this God's encounter that I'm telling you about, I promise you, you all, I have one every day. Every day, someone just, I mean, you just see the hand of God making something work out. I'm like, wow, that don't, that's not even normal. But um, I'm sharing this because I realize it now. But I seek God. I seek Him every day. I seek His face. So you do that. You do that. And look how God will intervene in your life. The hand of God. You will have your own God encounters. So thank you for watching. And um, I'm Dr. Lee. And as always, let go, let God, and keep it moving. Take care.